Hello, everyone. We are in the second week of Advent, this season where the church prepares for Jesus' coming. Now, we traditionally understand this as, as uh, thinking about preparing for Christmas, of Jesus' coming as a baby laid in a manger uh, December 25th. But the, the church has understood this time of, of this season of waiting and preparation uh, more to be about preparing for Jesus' second coming. Uh, the season of Advent is a uh, four weeks of fasting and preparation, fasting and prayer, seeking to ask ourselves, are we ready for Jesus's return prior to the 12 day feast of Christmas from December 25th to January 5th? Uh, so during this this season, we are anticipating our Lord is returning. And uh, during the second week, we're thinking about the number two. Uh, and I want to think a little bit today about how Jesus is not only fully human, he's also fully God. And not only fully God, but he's also fully human. Because today is December 6th, and December 6th is the feast day for St. Nicholas. We uh, we know him better, perhaps, in our culture as, as Santa Claus. Uh, but here's a here's a picture of St. Nicholas along with his, his uh, St. Spiridon, who's uh, uh, one of the other saints in Greece. Uh, I don't know if they actually uh, hung out together or not like this, but uh, but according to tradition, they were both present at the Council of Nicaea in 325. Uh, St. Nicholas is said to have lived from AD 270 to 343. Now, St. Nicholas is the one here who is not wearing the bishop's hat, the mitre, uh, on his head. And there's a reason for that, according to tradition. Uh, during the Council of Nicaea, uh, St. Nicholas was so upset with what the Bishop Arius was teaching, Bishop Arius of Alexandria, uh, that that St. Nicholas punched him. And this was a very unbishop like thing to do. So uh, so he was stripped of the ability, the, the right to wear the bishop's clothing, uh, the bishop marks. Uh, and and uh, uh, and that's why he's depicted in, in iconography without the, the hat. Now, why was he so upset? Well, Arius was teaching that Jesus was the first creation of God, that uh, that there was a time when Jesus didn't exist until God had brought him into creation. Now, that was not the faith of the church as the, as the other bishops understood. It's certainly not as, as St. Nicholas understood. Uh, the faith of the church is that Jesus is the incarnation of the second person of the Trinity, the, the eternal Son of God, uh, that there was never a time when he was not. He is eternally begotten of the Father. As the creed says, he is light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and became down as, as uh, was, made, was made human, fully human. Uh, today, we think about the two natures of Jesus. He is eternally God, always God, uh, the eternal Son of God, fully God, but he's also fully human. Uh, that that he took on our flesh and not just uh, pretending to take on our flesh, not just putting on a, a human suit, as it were, but he truly, eternally uh, took on our flesh uh, to be joined with us uh, forever. And this is important, not, not just as something the theologians debate about, but for our salvation. What does it mean to be saved? Are we, uh, are we simply... Uh, you know, is salvation simply about going to heaven when we die? Uh, is salvation simply about um, uh, learning right things, knowing right things? No, none of that. Uh, uh, that that what salvation is is about being made enabled to be in relationship with God, part of the family of God, uh, made adopted daughters and sons of God. That that our our salvation is about being in God's presence forever. And how, how can we do that, though? We are sinful beings. Uh, not just are we less than God by being his creation, but but we are sinners. We've rebelled against him. Well, the faith of the church is that Jesus is truly God and truly human. He took on all that we are, in, and, and by his taking on our humanity, he redeemed us thoroughly, fully. Uh, he was conceived as a human, dwelt nine months in a human womb, uh, was born as a baby, lived 30 some years as, as a human on earth. Uh, he grew and knew the different stages of, of humanity. Uh, he died for us and, and in his life and his death and all the taking on our humanity. And then when he was raised, he was raised as a human and ascended into heaven, still bearing our flesh. So he sits at the right hand of the father, still bearing our flesh. He is uh, he is eternally united to us by grace. 
And, and by because of that, we can be united with God. We can know God now, and we can trust that when we too have, have died with Christ and, and raised with him, uh, we are ascended also, says, says Paul. And we are seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus by his grace, by who he is. We are united. He united himself with us that we might be united with him. And that, that's more than a five minute meditation perhaps can, can convey. But, but when we think about the two natures of Jesus, it matters. It matters that he is fully God so that our destination is to truly be with God. Uh, and he is fully human, meaning that all that we are has been assumed by him and, and brought into union with God uh, in, in, in our Lord Jesus. So we give praise and honor and thanks to him uh, who is eternally uh, our savior.